Shame is that core belief about my identity. It's a core belief about who I am in terms of value and being lovable and being worthwhile. And shame is a negative belief that I'm not good enough and that I'm not lovable and that I am a burden. And that core belief is what comes out of childhood trauma. And that core belief, what we're going to see, begins to shape and affect everything you do, how you cope, how you relate to other people. It is like this massive earthquake takes place and it just starts going out into all corners of your life. Now, let me give you two things to think about in regards to this. Number one, that core belief of shame is actually distortions. You were given lies. You were given stuff about you and how people treated you, responded to you and what they said to you that isn't the truth about you, but you believe the distortion. So you need to understand that up front. But secondly, I want you to understand how difficult and how deep this goes and how difficult it is to deal with. I don't know if you've ever been into like the Red River X or Disney World where they have the house of mirrors with all the distorted mirrors. And so let's say that you're six feet tall and you're very skinny, okay? And you walk into a house of mirrors and there's a mirror there that makes you look four feet tall and four feet wide, okay? And you look at that and you laugh and go, wow, that is amazing to be that way. Now just imagine this. Imagine you're six feet tall and skinny but you grow up in a home where there's only one mirror and that one mirror shows you to be four feet tall and four feet wide. And that's the only mirror you're ever allowed to look at. So every day when you wake up and throughout the day when you pass by that mirror, what is reflected back to you is a kid who's four feet tall and four feet wide. Imagine that's every day. What would happen when you got to be 18 and you moved away from home and you went into a home where there was an accurate mirror that showed you to be six feet tall and skinny, you go, there's something wrong with that mirror. You wouldn't say, wow, that mirror I had growing up is screwed up. You go, no, that mirror I had growing up was the truth. That mirror there on that wall that says I'm six feet tall, that's crazy. You want to know what happens if people were to come to you, if you've had this distorted mirror that gives you the message of shame that you're not good enough and somebody was to come to you and they were to say, you are such a wonderful person. What goes on in your head? You go, they're just saying that to be nice. They don't really mean it. Well, you just discounted it, right? Or they go, you go in your mind. Well, they're saying that because they really don't know me. If they knew me, they wouldn't say that. You see how the shame message is causing you to discount their thing? Or some of you would go, wonder what they want. They're working me. That's why they're being nice here. They've got a secret agenda. And so you could not accept compliments from people. Why? Because your shame mirror said you do not deserve compliments. You are not a good person. You are not a lovable, valuable person. And so when somebody says that to you, it's like that mirror that says you're six feet tall and skinny. You go, something's wrong with that mirror. That's how big this issue is. How do you begin to heal from shame? It's one thing to understand it, to analyze the problem. But where do you go to start to change that? My hope for everybody here. If you grew up with a distorted mirror that said you're four feet tall and four feet wide, is that someday you can look at an accurate mirror that says you're six feet tall and thin and say, that's the truth. I believe it. But that is a journey to get there. And so let me just say this. There's a couple basics. I'm not going to expand on it. I'm just going to give them to you quickly. But number one, hang around healthier people who will be more accurate mirrors that will reflect to you a more accurate picture about your value and how lovable you are. Here's why I emphasize that. What happens for many people in recovery is 
They're afraid to make new relationships with people, so they go back to old friends or they go back to unhealthy family. And you want to know what going back to unhealthy family is? It's going back to a distorted mirror. And so you could be in treatment. I've seen this happen over and over where you're starting to feel better about yourself. You're starting to heal from your shame and you go home to visit family and mom raises an eyebrow and makes a comment and all of a sudden you feel like that person has no value and is a pain and a burden and not good enough. It all comes rushing back. And so you need to begin to think about putting up boundaries with people who aren't healthy mirrors in your life. And I I just add that for many people, the spiritual relationship is an important piece in healing at this level of starting to get the proper messages about who I am. The next thing is you have to start on a journey that says, okay, I received a whole lot of distorted messages. Some of them might have a little bit of truth about who I am, but much of it was lies. And I need to begin to sort out what is the lie that I was told about me? What are the tapes that play in my head that say I'll never amount to anything? I need to identify the lies in there and begin to replace it with the truth. And that is a journey and it is a slow but steady progress type of journey. The next thing is maintain a clear conscience. You want to know what happened when you're feeling really good about yourself and you're starting to say, I like me a little bit. And then you do something that you really hurt somebody else and your conscience is eating you up. It brings all the shame feelings back. So you need to keep doing that stuff that keeps that conscience clear and you're dealing with the damage that you've done in the lives of others. And then there's value in serving. Because as you begin to help in various ways, you begin to learn where you have value. You begin to learn, I'm really good at helping people in that way. I'm terrible in this way. But you begin learning where your strengths are. And then the next thing that I think is absolutely essential is you need to talk about your shame stuff with people who are safe. People who will accept you. The fear is if I talk about this, these people are going to make fun of me. They're going to judge me. They're not going to want anything to do with me. Do you want to know what usually happens though? When you get honest about how you really feel, people appreciate it. People say, now I want to be your friend because you're real. And I want that kind of a friendship. That's scary territory. Don't just go up to somebody and say, Tim said I need to start talking about it, so sit down. I'm going to barf all over you for the next two hours. Probably not wise. Go gradual, okay? So the final thing is be patient with yourself. When you received, if you think about it, probably millions of shame messages growing up, You don't undo all of that in a day. You don't undo it in a week. It is a journey. And you might have made a whole bunch of healing and really, really grown. And 10 years from now, you walk into a situation and something about that triggers something from your childhood that brings stuff back. And you want to say, oh, I haven't learned a thing. No, you've learned lots. You just now have a new thing that has come up that you can grow and heal a little bit more in.